late getting in from town last night, weren't you? Well, Ben, you know Casey always says we got to keep on friendly terms with the people in these towns, don't he? Well, that's just what I was doing. You know, Tony, one of these days you're going to get on such friendly terms, you're going to end up married. I don't know if we'd miss you or not. Ben, you know you just couldn't get along without me. Ben, what was that? See what I see? I see it, but I don't believe it. So we better stop him before he spooks the animals. They're restless enough as it is. <laughs> For a job with a circus, we'd be happy to talk to you about it, but will you stop that racket? The McDuff's here to welcome the circus. That's why we appreciate it, but he's scaring the animals. Now tell Miss Dauphin or I'll have to take that thing away from him. McDuff does as he pleases, now stand aside. Listen, I'm trying to talk to him. Move! <laughs> Up, uh, I mean, hey, Tony, Ben, what in the world's going on here? I misunderstand the nuts, eh? I'm Angus McDuff. I come to Walton the circus and hey, look around. <laughs> that two young bulls there that got my son-in-law. So you're Angus McDuff, huh? They told us in the last time we'd be running into you. Uh, I'm Angus, all right. I, I, it's a privilege, too, to meet up with new people. Uh, I'm sorry what's happened here, Mr. McDuff. I, I hope you don't have any hard feelings. Oh, no hard things at all, lad, no. The ratters were only feeling the notes, is all. Shake, lad. I like the way you handle Paul and Carl. <laughs> yeah. oh, you have a powerful grip, boy, you do. Here, I want you to latch a shake with my son-in-laws, Paul and Carl. <laughs> Hey, laddies, give me a talking minute. Now, go out and enjoy yourself, see? And uh, then I'll meet you back at the wagon. And uh, I want to talk to these people a bit. You never know who you'll meet or when you'll meet them, see? Agreed? Agreed, I guess. <laughs> Mr. McDuff, we're happy you could visit us. Uh, my name's Casey Thompson, this is Tony Gentry, and my partner, Ben Travis. Now, if you'd like to stay a while, we'd be proud to show you around our circus, sir. Uh, you might be hospitable, lad, yes. Hey, hey, Ben and Tony, eh? You're good names. <laughs> you bet they are. Now, our cook tent over here. Charlie, uh, perhaps you'd like to stay for breakfast, sir? Breakfast? This is breakfast enough for the beginning of the celebration. And <laughs> the celebration begins this morning. <laughs> what celebration is that? <laughs> what celebration, yes? The only celebration of Clan Macduff. The 567th anniversary of the Battle of Doxning Moor. Oh, sure, that celebration. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, though, if you'd let one of your stalwarts show me around the grounds. Be our pleasure, sir. Tony, let's go to the gentleman. Hey, hi, lad. And uh, just what were you told about him? Ben, there's a great colony of Scotchmen around here. Macduff heads it up. Now, if we be nice to him, he'll probably spread the news around. We'll do some business with these Scotchmen. Yeah, well, maybe so, but you see he keeps those bagpipes quiet, huh? Leave that old Scotchman to Casey. <laughs> yes, sir. A fine breakfast, Mr. Casey. Thank you. I enjoyed your tale of the circus. 
just as much of the tales of the Clan Macduff. <laughs> I'm sorry my two boys are not here to hear you talk. They went into town, but they'll be back pretty soon. Hey, would you join me in a drop of the duo, Doc Neen, in celebration of the great day in history? You can the day, do you not? Well, I'm not up in my Scotch history too much, but uh, you were saying something about a battle. A battle? Mm -hmm. Oh, Mr. Thompson, not just a battle, the battle. The Battle of Daphne Moor, the greatest day in the history of the Clan Macduff. I, I see it as though it were yesterday. Uh, the scent of the heather and the mist rising from the moor. And like the Macduffs, brave, courageous, standing there with the sun gleaming on the claymores and the pipes are scurling and and there up out of the heather rode the McNeils sneaky and mean as they are to this day there they were dirts the dirts mind you a flashing in the sun the blood ran as red as a tartan of McNeil they were doing this and that yeah. and this and that and they're going to you and then they and there, and there yonder yonder old Tavis McNeil himself the devil incarnate McDuff mm -hmm. you mind going outside and explaining the rest to me maybe she got more room out there oh, there's more to it though there's more to it there's more oh yes yes Tell you what, let's have a drop of the do, Doc Neen. I want to chase out that horrible name of McNeil off my tongue. All right. You, uh, you don't hate all McNeils, do you? Eh? They're all snakes. I knew a McNeil once. Eh? Except that he, he was a good friend of mine. He saved my life. Yeah, but he put his hand in your pocket. When you weren't looking, I'll wait to that. Oh, not this, McNeil. He had two fine sons. Great man he was. Mm -hmm. Why, old Tevis McNeil... Ah, uh, I get the hang of this hook. That hated name, I check. That hated name, I get my hand of this hook. McDuff, simmer down, simmer down. Hey. <laughs> let's have a little drop of this scotch oatmeal here, and hey, let's toast, uh... Old friends and new faces. Ah, uh, uh, Mr. Casey, should it know your fault you had the misfortune to you know the McNeil? But tell me about those two laddies, Ben and Tony. Yeah, they're two fine boys. Uh, strong as bulls. Uh, see, uh, do they travel with their wives with the circus? Well, they're not married, McDuff. Neither one of them. They're no married, you see? No. Hey, not married. <laughs> That's very, very interesting. Horses like you. Well, thank you, Mr. McDuff. I just have told you. <laughs> uh, bunny of face. Send them too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to know you, boy. It's a pleasure to know you. Uh, Chest, lad. Hey, hey, good wind, too. Well, you know, that's good in a man. Very good in a man, yes. Hey. Hey. Hey, Larry, you're built like a McDuck. Uh, 
Now, don't let me disturb you, Lottie. Oh, no, no. I'm just doing one of the more unpleasant tasks around the circus. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Casey, tell me you hey, head for business, eh? That's a thing I admire in a young lady. Eh? A necessary thing, you know. Yes, it is. Yeah. You know, Casey, your Scotch friend is getting in everybody's hair around here. Oh. Particularly Tony's and mine. Damn, try and put up with him. I tell you, he's gonna do us some good. Well, maybe so. Maybe. You better stash this stuff. How's it add up? Oh, better than usual. That's what I like to hear you say. Angus, we were starting to get worried about you. <laughs> Yeah, is your circus over already? Oh, the circus is at the gun, Maddie. <laughs> I came to tell you we're going to stay just a little longer than I thought. What about the tickets for the train? I thought you were going to Denver. Ah, no, that's the point, lad. I want to stay around the circus a bit longer. You see, it's a wise man who knows that the bunniest heather grows in his own backyard. So why should I spend all the money to go to Denver when the pickings are better around my own hen? Those two? Oh, now, lad, stop fretting and stewing. Isn't it enough that I have six girls worrying over me and your two wives the worst of the lot? Yeah, but if anything goes wrong, this Ben and Tony won't be so easy to handle. Let me take care of that, would you? When the pickings are good, it's time for the picking. <laughs> Here, get me another jug of the do a duck mean. I have some softening up to do with the owner of the circus, see? And see you now, I'll get something to eat and then go back. Here. Yeah. You know, as much as I love my wife, sometimes I wonder if I didn't make a mistake. Don't let Angus hear you say that. It's talk like that that started the Battle of Doc Nin Moore. You can let it? You are Colonel Thompson, aren't you? Yeah, no, but who are you? S Sandy and Robin McNeil. Tevis McNeil's boys. Not the McNeil boys. Well, am I glad to see you boys. Tevis is boy. Well, the last time I saw you, you were no higher than a grasshopper. But what are you doing jumping out from one of those wagons? Why didn't you come direct over to my place here? Well, we were going to come and see you first thing this morning, but... Well, we, we, we heard the McDuff was here, and we didn't want to cause you any trouble. Yeah, he's here. He's gone, and he told me about that feud, but... Come on, tell me more about yourselves. Well, there isn't much to tell. Uh, ever since Pa died, we just decided to farm on our own. We've been out here about a year now. I bet you're both good farmers. Your dad sure was. He was a good friend of mine. He saved my life one time. Did he ever tell you about that? Yeah, he, he told us about that. And he, uh, he also told us if we ever got in any trouble and we needed some help and you were near, that we should come to you. Just, just like we'd come to him if he were still here. Your dad was exactly right, boys. Well, I hate to say it, but, uh, well, we do need some help. Wait a minute. You're not in trouble with the law, are you? Oh, no, no. It's nothing like that. Well, what it... Wait a minute. It doesn't have anything to do with that McDuff, does it? Well, kind of. Uh... We got to borrow some money. We'll give you a note on our farm for security. Oh, don't worry about it, boys. Come on into my wagon. Let's talk it over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As I told you, boys, Angus is in there watching the performance. Huh? We don't want to cause no trouble for you. Trouble? For the sons of my best friend, there's no trouble at all. A lot of money on that box. Now, how much do you want? You say you want a hundred dollars? Why? A great show, Casey. <laughs> I had a long visit with my two friends, Janet J. They make me! Now wait a uh, minute. Now wait a minute, McDuff. I don't want no trouble. Jack! 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 Now listen here, McDuff. Boy, don't do this. Now wait a minute, fella. Now wait just a minute, fella. Now oh, here, young fella. Don't do that. Now wait a minute. Oh, oh. Hey, now, come on, now. Ah, it's a good fella. Ah, look, Casey. Never run into a McGuff charge. Ah, boy. Casey! Is 
here. What happened here? The McNeils were here. They assaulted us. He got hit in the chin and they took the money box. Well, Ben, what are we just standing here for? Let's go uh, get him. Uh, there's nothing like a McNeil chase to satisfy him at all. Hurry up, get him, get him. Still couldn't find him. I hate to admit to a talent in the McNeil. But those two can hide quicker than a flea on the dog's back. They're in the brush for now. Yeah, we better split up. If you see him, Tony, fire a shot. All right. I I'll put my two son-in-laws on the track. They're in the clearing at the crossroads. You can it. Well, I know where it is. We'll meet you there. Right. No luck, laddies? No. Uh, whole night wasted. Uh, be in the headlight in an hour or so. Hey, you know Paul and Carl? Well, sure. Thanks for trying to help us. Sorry we got off to a bad start. Think nothing of it. Oh. Oh. Angus, I wish there would have been some other way. Yeah. I told you I'd get them there for you, didn't I? <laughs> uh, 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 for once in the history, the McNeils had done the McDuffs a favor. <laughs> here. Tight and tight now, laddies. Here now, loose, and there may be more than you can handle. <laughs> tonight, and I think that there'll be a chill in their bones. Now then, if you're quiet and nice and cause me no trouble, see, and I'll tell you, and I'll, I'll warm your souls, we are dropping the duo, Doc Neen. Mister, I'm gonna warm you up myself. You don't turn me loose from here. Ah, uh, now, I was hoping you wouldn't feel that way, lad. Well, how do you expect us to feel? You pretend that you're helping us catch the McNeils all the time here in cahoots with them. Don't mention the hated name. Believe me, Mr. Travis and Mr. Gentry, it'll be better if you don't fight it. All we want to do is be friends. Friends? Well, that's a fine way to make friends. First you rob us, then you kidnap us. Oh, no, not kidnapping, lad. No, no. Just an invitation. I was just hoping you'd accept it. All right, we accept it. Now you turn us loose before we tear up your little old wagon. <laughs> a lot of spunk the lads have, eh? Hey, <laughs> look. Take it easy do, and drive careful. I don't want them battered and bruised. I wonder what that old man wants us for. I have the slightest idea, Tony. All I know is I feel like a side of beef on the way to market. Thompson had given us a key to open this thing. Well, it was no time, Sandy. It was enough that he gave us the money. Still don't understand why everybody kept chasing us all night long. The McDuff is no man to give up. What's come over you? Well, we only asked for a hundred dollars. There must be well over a thousand in here. We, we took the receipts and the company payroll and everything. That's why they're chasing us. They think we're thieves. Now I can see where they just might think that. Uh, we, uh, we better get this back now. No, there's no time. We'll go through with our plans first, then we'll get the rest of the money back to Colonel Thompson. All right, we'll go through with our plans first. Even if it does mean the second battle of ducking and more. Hey, 
that is. <laughs> I hate to see you tied like that. Uh, so I'm going to cut you loose. Ah, it's about time. And when I am turned loose... <laughs> mm. <On> second thought. <laughs> Have no fear, lads. My affection for you is like a, a father for his sons. <laughs> This gun's got an awful soft trigger. I just wouldn't want anything to happen. No, no. Neither would I. Not along that line. Uh, come on, my lads. Though it hurts me to tell you, Carl and Paul will be right behind you with the soft trigger shotguns. And, yeah, lads, here's where I brought you. This is McDub Valley. <laughs> the prettiest spot in the world. Oh, agreed, it is beautiful. And when I came here, there was nothing but stones and rocks. <laughs> My wife and six girls, we fixed it with our own hands. Well, I can understand why you're proud of it. But if you just wanted to show us your farm, you, you didn't have to hog tie us. Oh, no, laddie, it's not that, you see. I want you and Tuna to stay here with me and, and share it. Well, uh, you don't seem to understand. You see, I own half of that circus, and I don't want to be a farmer. No, that's kind of you, Angus. That's real kind. We're just not cut out. You don't have to make up your mind now, lad. Just stay away as a wife and then decide. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, but <laughs> we'll be leaving. Like Angus says, stay with us a while, then decide. Now, we hope you learn to like it. I know you like it, lads. Come on now, dear. No, don't, don't die now. Come on, let's go. Now, just one more time, slow. Did Robin and Sandy McNeil steal your money or didn't they? Of course they didn't. Their father was one of my best friends. So they didn't steal their money. Hmm. So it ain't no crime. No. So I'll believe. Now, you just wait just a lot of doggone minute, Sheriff. Everything was all right till that fellow with them bagpipes, that Scotsman, that McDuff coming. Now, you just wait a lot of doggone minute. Don't you go accusing Angus. Oh, sir, he's one of our finer citizens. Just because every year when it comes time to celebrate the battle, he gets a little loud and fussy, that don't mean nothing. Well, I say, we got folks around here get loud and fussy three, four times a week. So if you're accusing Angus... Nobody's accused Angus. It's just that two of my boys are missing. Boys missing? Yeah. How big? Uh, well, they're not kids. They're grown-up men. 21 years old? Certainly. They're, one of them's my partner, and the other's my advance man. Now, you look here, Mr. Thompson. If you don't pay them well enough, when they don't like the working conditions and walk out on you, that's no matter for a sheriff. So if you'll excuse me, I got tax collecting to do. You ain't gonna have me look for my man? But if I run into him, I'll mention you was asking for him. You'll be right comfortable here. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. Believe me, Mr. Travis, we just want you to like us. Well, a good step in that direction would be to let us out of here. I'm sorry, I can't do that. All right, Ben, what do you think? Well, I don't know, Tony. It, well, it looks like slave labor to me. Old man McDuff needs workmen. <laughs> Doesn't want to pay for him. So he kidnaps us. Well, the way he's been pinching me and looking at my teeth, I sure know the way I'm going to end up. I'm going to be in harness. Pulling a plow. Mary. Mary. Be reasonable. Your father knows what's best for you. For once in my life, I'd like the privilege of knowing what's best for myself. Don't sass your feather, young lady. I can't see any harm to it, Mary. You never see the harm in anything. You're like a mother, Patricia. <laughs> now, go along now with your guests. Be nice to them. They're fine lads, the both of them. Ah, oh, come on, Mary. We might as well. 
three-year-old say this? Eh? Oh, all right. <laughs> Uh, ben, you could set the cabin on fire and we could go out the front door under the cover of the smoke. Yeah, that's not a bad thought, Tony, if you don't mind being filled full of buckshot. Oh, all right, you come up with an idea then. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. I have it. Uh, come in. Oh! Who wants to get up now? I'm Mary McDuff. This is my sister, Patricia. We've come to welcome you into the valley. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm Ben. And I'm Tony. Ben? And Tony. Hmm? Father said you'd be Bonnie. And you are. Oh. Patricia. Well, Father said to be friendly. Oh, well, you come on. You be friendly. Oh, Tony, Tony. <laughs> hold on a minute. Oh, Ben. Now, uh... Do you mind telling us why we're being held prisoners here? Oh, you can go any place you want in the valley. You're not really prisoners, as long as you're with us. Well, you call it what you want, but uh, we started out after the McNeils, and now we're being held here at Shotgun Point. You know Robin and Sandy McNeil? <laughs> ben, you better watch out. You're going to start that battle at the Dockanine Moor all over again. I'd start it if, if I could get my hands on that Robin McNeil. And if I ever get within gunshot of that Sandy McNeil. I know, it sounds like you share your father's hatred for the McNeils. Those tongue-tied, chicken liver, no good, lying, conniving. Oh, now, hold on a minute now. Uh, don't worry, I think they'll be behind bars soon. Behind bars? Oh, no. What'd they do? Well, they just stole over $1,000 from us. Robin and Sandy? Huh? Oh, no. They wouldn't. They're the kindest, sweetest. Oh, now, wait, hold on a minute. Didn't you just say you, you didn't like him? I hate that Robin McNeil. And I hate that Sandy. Fine. Then why are you defending them? You're thieves, you know. They're not thieves. They're honest and sweet. And I can't help it if they're stupid. Wait just a minute, Miss. Do you hate them or don't you hate them? Well, there's a big difference in hating them and hating them. Don't you understand that? No, I don't. Oh, I think we understand. Did you see anything? The two circus men are in the cabin. Patricia and Mary are with them. Well, I don't like that, Brother Robin. I don't like it either, Brother Sandy. I, I think we'd better do something about it. I think we'd better. And on top of that, you, you said you didn't invite us here. You also said that you didn't care whether we stayed or if we left. So why don't you help us escape? You don't understand. We love our father. And the clan rules mean everything to him. I understand, but this isn't Scotland. This is America. Wouldn't be easy. But maybe when Paul and Carl are still at lunch, and the four of us were out for a walk. And I'd like to go for a walk. Oh, there's much to be seen. I bet you're right. Listen, Mary. Mary, you're doing the right thing. You know your father's all wrong. It's just that this is the week of the celebration, and he's been sampling too much of the dew of the docking. But he means well, Ben. You must believe that. I'm trying hard to believe it. Mary, Mary, I have a circus to run. My, my partner must be worried sick. You have to be very careful. If father goes into a rage, there's no telling what'll happen. Well, you, you just tell us what to do. Both you and Tony have watches? Sure, why? All right, you and Tony must set your watches exactly alike. Are you listening, Tony? You sure are lovely. <laughs> yeah, he's listening. Mary, you can depend on me. Yeah, Mary, go ahead. We'll all eat the noon meal together, for that's what Father will expect. After we've finished eating, Tony and Patricia will go for a walk. You and I, Ben, will walk in another direction. We'll meet at one behind the cabin. We'll have exactly five minutes before Paul and Carl return to their guard post.
We don't want to leave here now, do we? Tony, I know it's difficult, but think of Casey. Remember, one o'clock behind the cabin. There's no fairer lassies in the whole world than those of the Clan McDuff. We're sure in accord on that, sir. <laughs> and a fine son-in-laws. Are you happy, lads? I've never been happier in my life. I'll never forget the day I came to the valley. And uh, did you come here by invitation also? Well, I've found so much happiness I've forgotten. Father, with your permission, I'd like to show Ben around a little. Uh, you're a good girl, Mary. That's exactly what you should do. Would you mind, sir, if Patricia and I went for a little walk? What I mind? Oh, laddie, need you ask? You're a guest. Go on before you. <laughs> It had to be split second time. I mean, where's Tony? Yeah, I don't know, but I, I can't leave without him. He's supposed to circle around the well house. Come on, let's take a look. See what time it is, you were supposed to meet us. Oh, is it that time already, Ben? Well, Pat and I were just sitting here talking. Yes, I can see. Hurry. <laughs> it sure was a good meal, wasn't it? You four have a good walk? Yes, uh, nice walk. been on time, you know, a few more seconds and we'd have been out of here. Oh, Ben, my heart just wasn't in it. Besides, I'm beginning to like it right here. <laughs> Excuse me, Ben. I'm sorry it didn't work out, Ben. Don't you worry. You did everything you could. How are we to know that we would have a traitor amongst us? Ben, I don't know what came over me. I think I do. Say, Tony, mm -hmm. why don't we try to sneak out through the bushes? Oh, no, Ben. It's no use, Ben. You're being watched every minute. There you see, Ben. There's their friend Paul behind that bush with a shotgun. I think I'll just go have it out with the old man. It won't help. Once Father's made up his mind to a thing, they're... Oh, Ben, I'm so unhappy. What are we going to do? Well, I, I think it would help if you start out by, well, by telling us how your father got to feel this way, huh? Well, he wants us to see other men after he found out what we were doing. Well, what were you doing? We were sneaking out, seeing the McNeils, ever since they first moved here. Well. Till father stopped us. Well, if there's anything I hate to see, it's a, a pretty girl that's unhappy. Ah, Tony, if we'd only met a different time, another place, I could learn to like you very much. Well, you can, you can pretend it's that other time and that other place, if it'll make you feel any better. Well, you know, uh, your father has no right to tell you who you should love and who you shouldn't, even if their names are McNeil. I didn't say I was in love with Robin McNeil. But you are, aren't you? Don't you worry, we'll, uh, we'll help you straighten out this little problem. 
And we're not going to be in too much of a hurry about it either. Look, look. Just as I said, they would look. They're fallen in love already. And look. Oh, it sure that no man can resist the charm or a Macduff woman. <laughs> we shouldn't have doubted you, Angus. No. Hadn't been through it ourselves, we should have known. Uh, I, uh, this is the happiest day in the life of old Angus Macduff. Uh, Mary and Patricia is going to thank me for it. Sure, the McNeils have gone out of their minds already. <laughs> They're guarded every minute. We've got to get to them somehow. Oh, how? Well, we'll... We'll... Wait. <laughs> It's pretty obvious Macduff dragged us here to try to get the minds of Patricia and Mary off the McNeil boys. There for a minute, Ben, I kind of think we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, laddies, ah, you made me the happiest man in the world. I knew, I knew the moment I laid eyes on you, I said, here's the lads I want from our sons, who I will arrange for the wedding at once. Your what? The wedding? What wedding? A double wedding in true tradition of the clan Macduff. You and he to Mary and Patricia. Oh, that's ridiculous. Uh, now, here now. Do you admit or do you deny that you held Mary in your arms? No, I don't deny it. And you, Tony, do you deny you were kissing Patricia on the cheek? No, I don't deny it. Ah. And do you know the penalty for trifling where you're my dog girl? Death. As it were 567 years ago, on the Mora Dach Neden. Yeah. Were you trifling or were you not? Look, no one was trifling with your girls. Yeah, and then the, you're in love. <laughs> so the wedding would be arranged in the true tradition, the Clan Macduff. Eh? I'll send your kilts. I hope they fit you. <laughs> Come on, Carl Larry. <laughs> oh, I'll take the high road and you'll take the low road. And I'll be on Scotland afore ya. For me and my true love will never be again. On the body coming back. Oh, Larry. The Macduff is gone. Now's our chance. Well, I guess all we can do is humor him until we're in a position to force someone to listen to reason. <laughs> Ben, I wonder if that's how come he got Carl and Paul to stay here. And now, and who are you? We're the McNeils. Well, you're the ones that stole our money. No, we didn't steal it. It uh, was all a mistake. We just meant to borrow a hundred dollars. So, so we could get married. Huh? To the uh, McDuff girls. Mm. That's why we're here today. Uh, if we can just see the girls here alone, we're going to ask them to run off with us and be married. Well, don't you think it'd be better to face up to the McDuff and tell him he want to marry his daughters? Well, you don't know the McDuff. Colonel Thompson said he thought it would be best if we just eloped with him. Well, what has Colonel Thompson got to do with all this? No, he, he was going to lend us the money for the wedding and the honeymoon. Oh. I don't know if this makes any sense, but uh, oh, we'll accept it. I tell you what, we'll bring the girls to you here, if, if you'll help us get out of here. Oh, well, now, we'd be very happy to help you get out of here. I didn't like the way my Patricia was looking at you. <laughs> Nor I the way my Mary was snuggling so close. Fine, then it's, uh, it's all arranged. Uh, but what, what about the money for, for the train ticket and the wedding and the honeymoon? Yeah, well, I'll lend it to you. <laughs> You've got a heart as big as Colonel Thompson. <laughs> that ought to do it, I think. You wait here, we'll be right back. Thanks. Hi, that is McNeil! Greg! Just now, oh, listen! Oh, listen, get Angus! Oh. Angus, they're my wedding guests! You touch them and off. Uh, pull the whole thing right off, you hear? Uh, your guest? That's right, every man's got a right to have a few friends at his wedding and they should be treated with courtesy. All right. It's good to see my girl's married. Uh, uh, so he said 
You're his guest. And you'll be treated as such. But tomorrow, hey, there's another thing. Do you ken that? We know what you mean, Macduff. Then the marriage is on, then. Here, put your kilt on. You've wasted enough time already. Well, this, uh, this whole feud between the McNeils and the McDuffs started because some 14th century Romeo winked at a McDuff girl and then uh, didn't marry her, huh? Oh, it was much worse than that. One of our cursed ancestors called a McDuff girl ugly. Yes, an ancestor or not, he had to be a liar. Well, the McDuff girls are the prettiest girls in the world. And my Mary's the prettiest of them all. All right, unless it be Patricia. And you mean if uh, someone were to speak against the beauty of a McDuff girl, they doomed do. forever. And rightfully so. These McDuffs are strong in tradition. <laughs> Tony, let's, uh, let's put on these kilts. Oh, Ben, you're not going to get me to wear that stuff. I don't know. I feel the same way, but I, I think I have a plan to straighten this whole thing out. Come on, just slip them on over your pants. Go on. Go on. Oh. How do you get them on? Say, Ben, the more I see of those two girls, though, the less I feel like fighting. It's very funny, Tony, but uh, you will do what I told you, huh? Robin, you get over there, Mike. Right, Ben. Uh, aye, laddies, that's a thing. You were mad at old Angus Macduff. <laughs> Accusing him of kidnapping and holding you prisoner. Uh, look at you now. Now you're, you're dressed befitting the clan of the Macduff and to be my own sons. Eh? Uh, if it weren't for the presence of those horrible McNeils, this would be the bonniest day in the history of the clan. But as a justice of the peace of the county, it's a privilege and an honor to pronounce the ceremonies for my daughters. So let us begin. Angus, uh, I'm sorry, but we can't go through with this marriage. You, you, you can't, hey, what? Well, it, it, it's come to my attention that your daughter Mary has been seeing Robin McNeil, secretly, that is. And Patricia here has been doing the very same thing with Mr. Sandy McNeil. Yes, and uh, being that your daughters have the reputation of, uh, I, I mean, that they're known as that kind of woman. Uh, what type of woman do you mean? What did... No man speaks like that about the woman I love. <laughs> and no man talks that way about the woman I hope to marry. Oh. Robin, I said... Here, take your filthy McNeil hands off my daughter. I'm taking her with me, Angus. And I'm taking Patricia. Paul, Carl, throw them off the land. Now, hold on a minute. Let's get this marriage thing settled once and for all. There'd be no marriage. I'll have no part of you or the McNeils either. Angus, how did this feud start in the first place? Wasn't it that a McNeil boy insulted a McDuff girl? Uh, yes. Curse the day to eternity. Well, now... Two McNeil boys have just defended the honor of two McDuff girls. That should more than settle the feud. Uh, has nothing to do with it. Why don't you ask the girls what they want? Uh, it's none of their business. They'll do as I say. No, Father. We've always honored and obeyed you, Father, but Patricia and I love Robin and Sandy, and we're going to marry them. Paul. Carl. If the McNeils move one foot, shoot them. Then you have to shoot us, Father. We'll be right here beside them. Angus, come on, why don't you face up to it? Uh, yeah, that's... I suppose I knew this was happening sometime or other. 
You know, nowadays, the women are not like they were 567 years ago. Now they make up their own minds. You know, the time is coming when they're going to want to vote and wear kilts. Goodbye, Father. Yeah, we'll write you. you. Hey, hold now, wait. Now, there's no stranger going to marry my daughters. No. Even if they are marrying McNeil's. You marry it? I will that. Ah, uh, lads and lassies. You have me present. Uh, here, take the pipes and play them. I'll dance at your wedding. <laughs> Had me worried to death. That dirty crook sheriff wouldn't help me. I had to run the show by myself. I had most of the people out looking for you two fellers. Oh, it's all right now, Casey. No, it ain't all right, Ben. I gotta tell you something. Well, there was these two fellas, this Sandy and Robin and McNeil. They wanted to borrow some money. They was in love with these two girls, and, and there's this family feud going on. Casey. Huh? Please don't tell us any of your cock and bull stories, because we're just not about to believe them. Oh, well, not a word of it, Casey. Well, it's a truth, fella. So help me, Hannah, it is. Yeah. Next thing you're going to tell us is that you advise the McNeil boys to kidnap the girls and run away with them. Well, now, that's exactly what I did do. Oh, come on now, Casey. Your stories get more unbelievable every day. Look, uh, you better put this thing in the safe, huh? All uh, right. Hey, wait just a lot of dog god darn minute, Ben. This here's our money box. Where'd you get it? Casey, I don't think you'd believe our story any more than we believed yours. But next time you decide to play Cupid, you let us know, huh? Days I just can't figure them two young fellas out. <laughs> 